Good morning, everybody. Um, it's great to virtually be with you. Um, I just have a short story to bring you from County Leash, where myself and my husband, Mark, um, are the Vice County Recorders. Um, he's behind me. <laughs> um, so um, just this uh, lovely picture here is of um, Lee Castle, uh, which is just near Port Arlington in County Leash. Um, and about five or six years ago, well, 2014 now, um, I was asked to come on board a project where the local community were trying to uh, get a conservation project going for their, their lovely local castle. Um, so the Heritage Council stepped in and I was asked to do um, an ecology uh, study. So because it's on the banks of the River Barrow and so it's SAC area, obviously. Um, so I wasn't expecting... You know, too, I mean, I was looking forward to it, wasn't expecting too much. But um, when I got there, the castle was covered in this lovely um, uh, wallflower. Um, and it was literally, the walls were literally covered in it. Um, and I, you know, with my famil familiarity with County Leash, I hadn't come across it before. So it was standing out to me. Um, and in, on the ground under my feet there was lots of this lovely flower, um, the Greater Celandine. Um, and another one that I hadn't come across in um, in County Leash. Uh, so I kind of, they caught my eye um, and had a look into them and discovered they were both examples of um, this wonderful phrase, archaeophyte denizen. Um, so I've put in the stace um, um, kind of, uh, reasoning behind them. And um, so they're plants that have been in Ireland for centuries since uh, at least medieval times um, and that they're here so long, um, you know, sometimes we're not 100% sure if they belong or if they were brought in. Um, and, and that would be the case there with the Greater Celandine. Um, but with the wallflower, we know it was brought in from the Mediterranean. But a little bit of research anyway into them. And um, very interestingly, I discovered that the wallflowers were deliberately planted on castle walls in medieval times underneath uh, windowsills. And they have a beautiful scent. And so, of course, they acted like uh, air fresheners, um, you know, wafting in a lovely scent into the into the rooms. And then Celandine, the greater Celandine has lots of uses. Um, and um, in the past, oddly, it was used a lot for um, eye troubles, but we since know that, that it can give severe conjunctivitis. So uh, they weren't always uh, looking in the right place, but it was also used. It has a very orange um, latex, which was used to cure warts. And this apparently does have, have some, some role. Um, so... Uh, through the Lee Castle project, I got to know Dr. Karen Dempsey, um, an archaeologist who's from Kildare originally, and she was involved with the, with the project there. Um, but those the, finding those plants and the stories that they could tell about um, medieval everyday life um, sparked her interest. And she approached the Castle Studies Trust in the UK and they um, funded um, a project for us to look at four castles in Ireland. So these are the four castles castles that we uh, that we chose. So we have Castle Cara in County Mayo, Castle Roach in County Louth, Adair Castle in County Limerick and Carberry Castle in County Kildare. You're probably familiar with with some of them. Um, some of them are open to the public, um, but they're all in uh, in lovely situations in different situations. So before I look at, at a few more of the plants, I wanted to highlight this species, Pelletory of the Wall. Um, because I found it on every castle, irrespective of circumstances. And it's something uh, I have found on every castle I have ever looked at. Um, and I'm interested to hear what the rest of you may be, if you have ever been um, looking um, on what you think. It does seem to have um, quite a lot of uses in the past. Um, it was used for diuretic, as a diuretic for pain relief, cough relief, and used as a poultice, uh, a poultice for fevers and boils. So it's has a lot of uses and would have been very popular, but it's obviously very persistent, um, but particularly always associated with castle walls. 
Um, and then moving on, um, just to look at a few other species, um, Castle Roach was the first um, castle that we visited um, up in County Louth. And my great friend and fellow ecologist, Dr. Neve Roach, uh, very aptly named, um, and she's a local, um, she came along. And so with a few more pairs of eyes, uh, we found uh, quite a lot of plants around this castle. This is on a, f- a working farm, um, but it's um, it has it's on this lovely uh, limestone escarpment, um, which uh, meant that it's got lots of uh, very interesting um, plants growing around it and areas where the grazing sheep couldn't get into. So um, this one here is my favourite of all of them, the milk thistle, um, Cilibum marianum. Um, It's got a lot of stories associated with it. Um, You can see in the leaves at the bottom there that it has um, these kind of white veins and so the, the story is that these were carrying the milk of Our Lady, the Mother of Jesus Christ. Um, and you can see that in the name, the Latin name, Marianum, and Fiocadon Mura, its Irish name, the Thistle of Our Lady. So there's a lot of associations. But so when because of that, it was used to help lactating mothers um, improve their milk supply. So um, it's a very tangible link back to medieval life, like the wallflowers being an air freshener. This is telling you something about everyday life um, in these castles. Um, Hemlock down the bottom, well known for being highly poisonous, um, but it was used externally for a lot of different things. Um, The slender thistle and broadwing thistle were both found there. They're they're very rare, but but they they were found there. Um, And I also love the great mullein up there in the corner. Um, That has several different juices. My favourite one of which is using the furry leaves uh, for inside your shoes to make your shoes cosy. Um, So I'm going to move on. And the next castle we went to then was Adair Castle uh, in July. And Adair is uh, normally open to the public, which have a lot of visitors. Um, but uh, the OPW has been doing a lot of conservation work on it in recent years. And so the walls, as you can see, were very clean. Uh, so there was very little uh, to be recorded on the walls here. It had some lovely yew trees. Uh, it has an, two in the outer ward and two in the inner ward. Down in the corner here, we had great hopes for that inner ward because we believe that it was a garden um, in the past, a, a private garden when people were living in the castle. Um, but as you can see, it has been extensively sprayed uh, for a good number of years. Um, so there was hardly anything growing there apart from a few liverworts that were managing to hang on. Um, it had a moat through it, so there was some nice plants in the moat. Um, but uh, you know, it, it's too hard to tell whether they would have been uh, used in the past. I'm sure they probably were, but as to whether they were present or not. Um, but this plant up in the in the corner here, uh, bank hawkweed. Um, this was growing up at the top of the ca- of the castle up here. Um, and the workers were kind of getting very enthused who were working at the castle saying, yes, the yellow flower up there. Um, and we found it growing on this church building, uh, which is adjacent to the castle where the walls hadn't been cleaned and it was actually covering the walls. Um, but as I say, it's a case of an example of barking up the wrong medieval tree altogether um, because I had my trusty copy of the floor of County Limerick by our Limerick VCR, Sylvia Reynolds, um, and she highlighted how this plant um, is an alien and has been locally abundant in the Adair area, but it's 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 since 1988, so um, that wasn't telling us anything. Um, Castle Cara, then out on the shores of beautiful Loch Cara in County Mayo, was a, was a lovely site. Again, it was another building that had been recently, the walls had been recently cleared by the OPW, so there wasn't much on it apart from the ubiquitous pellatory and then the navel wort down in the corner here. But navel wort is, is another plant that, I, you know, we would, I'm sure uh, most of you would know from seeing on, on the walls. And it has a great history. Um, and it's one that's really tangible in that um, this little picture here is is a, a known as the Smarmore Slate. And it was found at Smarmore in County Louth, um, a, an old church there. And it has uh, the writing on it. Are, uh, it was inscribed with what appear to be recipes for medicinal uses of lots of different plants. And navel wort is mentioned 
It's called uh, Pennyworth of the Walls um, in the recipes. But unfortunately, this, the piece that had what the recipe was used for um, wasn't uh, wasn't found. Um, and then just I just wanted to highlight here at um, Castle Cara what, what I loved. It didn't go back to medieval times, but it was really interesting. Is This is a, an old map, um, the OSI map from the mid 1800s. And you can see there's the castle there um, in ruins. And the old house is is here, uh, which this is the house that the family, the Lynch family would have moved into after they left the castle. And they extensively planted it with trees. There are records. Um, and this was the entrance kind of avenue, this crescent area. But that crescent area, it's a farmyard now. But you can see the crescent area. It's um, It has a row of uh, crescent of beautiful hornbeam trees, trees that I reckon must be at least 100 200 years old um, and what was great about these was that um, they were they had these kind of like adventitious roots coming out that seemed to be holding up the wall uh, it was very interesting so the wall was still up there you can see the root a lot across the top but here the wall had collapsed Karen's taking a picture there and you can see the stones were all down but some of the stones were still attached to the roots there um, they were just they were beautiful really interesting um, and then our, uh, we went to Carberry Castle, the fourth castle in July. And um, I just wanted to show this was a, a this is a print taken from the 1700s. And you can see this doorway here. This is this doorway here. The castle is covered in ivy now. Very uh, well known. If you're if you're up in North Kildare, you'll see it's got these very distinctive chimneys, which were distinctive then and they're distinctive now. Um, this castle is on a working farm. The, uh, the area all around it is quite heavy heavily grazed uh, by cattle, but it did feature lots of pellitory of the wall. But in this case, uh, the pellitory was growing really extensively on the ground, very lush growth. Um, it also featured hemlock and it had this one, hedge mustard, um, which is a probable archaeophyte and had loads of culinary and medicinal uses in the past. Um, it was used as a pot herb uh, for fish sauce. It was also used to treat hoarseness and chest complaints. So um, it, it, we did, Karen and myself did lots of, of, of background research, obviously, and the most interesting papers um, and that we felt were the most relevant um, is one by the, um, the, the Leash, v, uh, the Loud VCR of the past Donald Sinnott um, and uh, director, past director of our Botanic Gardens. Um, he wrote a terrific paper um, about uh, looking at uh, plants in folklore and legend. And he came up with this list of, of nine species, um, which he was finding in um, castles around the country. So that was back in 1979. Um, so we didn't find all of those species. <clears throat> the best one was Castle Roach. We found seven of the nine species that he has listed there. And then this other paper was very interesting by Anne Connolly, a study done in Wales in the in the 1990s. And she has come up with many different lists of different types um, of, of areas around uh, castles and also uh, medieval abbeys. And her list is kind of, uh, she found a, a, a bit more. Um, and I kind of, I'll point out, well, there's the hemlock and mallow, which we did find um, the greater celandine and then and the greater mullein um, and white archangel, which is one that I love, um, this lovely plant here. And I've come across that myself at other times. Um, it's growing right beside the ruins of Black Castle at Wicklow Town. And I also found it here. This is old St. Peter's graveyard in the middle of Port Leash Town, um, uh, which is part of the old medieval fortress that was set up. Um, Fiona, um, you're yeah. going to wrap up pretty quickly. Okay, Grant. Uh, I will just uh, just this was just to show some further reading. Um, so this slide will be there if people want to have a look at that. It has some of Karen's papers, and these were the books that I found most helpful. And this is just asking people questions. I'd love to hear if anyone else has any thoughts that they'd like to um, put on it, or maybe if you know if they want to contact me. So that's it. Thank you very much.